Hi guys, Mr. David here. So there are a lot of really interesting jobs out in the world. Take mine, for example. I get to read silly books with silly voices, do arts and crafts, and teach fun activities to kids. I love my job, and I can't believe it took me so long to find it. But in finding this job, I had a lot of other jobs working in kitchens at fast food restaurants, selling newspapers, selling insurance, working customer service, and we're even working as an actor. Now along the way, I learned a lot, but I also met a lot of interesting people with interesting jobs. You know what? I wanna share them with you. I want you to meet my friends and find out about their interesting jobs and what they did to get those jobs and what you can start studying if you want to do that in the future. Does that sound good? So over the next few weeks, join us as we get to talk to my friends and find out about their really interesting jobs. I hope you enjoy. first job that I ever knew that I really wanted to do was be a film director, was to work behind the scenes on movies or TV. I love movies and I love TV. And it was through that love that I found acting because I wanted to know what an actor goes through to be a better director. When I was younger, I actually got a job running cameras for the local public television station. Yeah. I actually filmed pledge breaks and little news shows. I was behind this big camera and learned all the focus and zooming and stuff like that. But I was not a great cameraman, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Years later, I met in college tonight's guest, and he actually has gone on to be a director of photography and a cameraman for reality TV shows. Does that sound like fun? Well, I hope you guys will welcome tonight's guest, David Plummer. Hey guys, I'm here with my good friend, David Plummer. So David, first off, in your own words, what is your job? Director of photography for uh, reality TV. Um, so reality TV covers everything that's just not scripted so um not your typical sitcoms but you know it'll even include sports sometimes i've shot a lot of sports shows and uh so as the director of photography uh, my, my job is to make everything that you see look good um everything that you guys see when you watch a tv show um is is orchestrated by the director of photography he's the one who's who's making sure everything is lit well everything is uh framed and in focus and uh, is is just making sure that the overall image of the show looks very good okay uh, how long have you been doing this Oop, you broke up i didn't hear that oh, question i'm sorry how long have you been uh working in uh photography for film and television um for i've pretty much much been doing it ever since I was a little kid. Um, I got my parents' little small VHS tape and uh, and started uh, making every video I possibly could um, with action figures and my buddies. <laughs> and we'd be in the backyard and we'd pretend we were Indiana Jones or whatever and having the best of times. Um, but professionally, I've been doing it probably ooh, going on close to like 15 years now. Okay. So, um, but I just recently became a director of photography. Um, I was camera operator and then before that camera assistant. So I've only been director of photography for about a year now. Okay, uh, now um, what all did you have to study uh, to be not just a director of photography, but also a camera operator? Um, so I went to film school at the University of Central Arts. Arkansas and uh, took a bunch of film courses there and and learned a lot um, but um, I would say you more important than learning how to film things to start off is just learning how to tell good stories sure. um, so anything that enjoys storytelling whether it be 
um, theater or film or um, even literature, English, history, um, all of those things, learning those helps you be able to tell stories better. And yes, as a director of photography, you're in charge of making a picture, but you also got to orchestrate that the story is being told through what you're showing people. Well, um, so going along with that, what are some things you look for when setting up a story through pictures? Like, uh, what do you kind of do? Okay. Um, so for example, um, right now I'm working on a show called uh, diesel brothers. It's on discovery channel. And, um, a lot of times the, um, the, the guys will give away trucks. That's part of our show. These guys, has built these huge trucks and we give them away to people. And um, there are very important moments in that when you're giving away a truck to somebody. One is you want to make sure that you have um, a great shot of the truck that they just won because you want to be able to be like, whoa, this is this is the truck. This is this gets everybody excited. But at the same time, it's not just about the truck, it's about the person who won. So you want to have a very nice image and a close up of the person who got the truck because their their reaction is everything um so you want to make sure that you see that but also you have to make sure that you see the big picture which is all the guys giving away the truck the person winning the truck and the person or and the truck itself so so you kind of have to be able to work the team together to um make sure all of those things are covered um so that way once it goes back to the editors they can they can tell the story better um okay. but without knowing that that's what the editor would want you would miss some of those things okay that's interesting so it's kind of like showing the the cause and effect what causes the emotion and you have to get both mm -hmm. sides okay correct yes, yes, All right. yes. Uh, so what's your favorite thing about uh being a director of photography and cameraman um, my favorite part about being a cameraman or just being in, in the oh. industry, a TV industry in general is, is, uh, no two days are the same. Um, it's really exciting, um, doing something just completely different every day. Um, I spent a season going around with Notre Dame football and I went, I was on the sidelines of every football game that Notre Dame played. Um, the, just two days ago, um, we were filming the guys just bought a tank. And so I'm chasing a tank around, uh, <laughs> in an off-road vehicle following a tank that's like, you know, being built. And then we're having to like jump out of the cars and jump into the tank. And like, it, you, it makes a lot of great stories that, um, you know, most, most people that work in an office and all those things, you know, never really get to experience. And for me, it's, it's an everyday thing. Um, from flying helicopters to, uh, like I said, chasing tanks to we just finished a desert off-road race where we're in the middle of all these sand dunes and, and things are leaping 20 feet, like vehicles are jumping 20 feet in the air. And uh, I, uh, I also fly the drone for the show. So um, I'm flying this remote controlled camera in the air going 70 miles an hour just through the desert. It's um, it's just really exciting. It's really fun. It's different. Um, and you just, you really get to experience things that you wouldn't in a lot of other jobs. So what you're saying is it's a very boring job. Oh, it's extremely boring. <laughs> uh, no, there's, there, yeah. <laughs> there, there, you do, you do have moments. Um, because with, with, with every, with every show, there are things like, like interviews and, um, you know, people just sitting down and talking like, like we are where you don't get to do as many exciting things with it, but that's also part of your job, but you get to mix in the, the really fun things as well. Well, you mean you don't get to do on the testimonials, mood lighting, Dutch angles, and just sweeping into them as they're talking about, well, <laughs> we changed the valve on this. <laughs> <laughs> we uh there there is actually a little bit more setup that goes into the the interviews and especially we have like um for this show we have a room that is specifically for interviews that is mm -hmm. that is perfectly lit and beautiful and um my uh, my co-dp on the show carlos and i work together really hard to make that look um as really good as it does and that's like 
the setup for that is fun and getting to see that image and see how good it looks is, is really exciting. But then when it actually comes time to like sit them down and, and talk, um, it's really just sitting in a chair and, and looking through the camera and making sure everything stays looking good. But, uh, sure. but it's, it's still, it's still fun. It's still rewarding. All right. So we talked about your favorite thing. Um, mm -hmm. What would be the toughest thing about your job? Now this doesn't mean the thing you like the least, just the, the toughest thing about your job? Um, I would say the, the, the hardest part, part of the job, um, especially on this show, would probably be um, it's reality TV, so you don't get um, another shot. Um, you, everything has to be exactly exactly right and in the moment. Um, so if, um, you know, something happens and it's 40 feet away and you got to get over there, you're running with a, with a 40 pound camera on your shoulders and, and chasing it down. And if they're, if they're riding a car through the woods, you're hanging on to a vehicle and holding the camera. Um, like I said, you're jumping up inside tanks. You're like, we've literally ran and slid under parked cars, not moving cars, but we slid under cars to film them underneath like a part breaks in a race and they're having to get under there quickly and fix it. Um, I've had a couple close calls and, uh, and different filming, different races and things where cars have literally flipped less than five feet in front of me. Wow. And, uh, so, um, it's, it's very physically demanding and very, um, it can be very stressful to make sure that you're getting everything you need to get all at one time because, um, very rarely do you get a second chance as opposed sure. to, um, like filmmaking where you see, you know, they go through, they set up a shot and if anything's wrong, even if everything's right, they'll still do another take just in case. They'll, they'll say it's for safety and they'll shoot another sure. one. Um, you, don't, you don't necessarily get that luxury in, in unscripted television. Now, has there ever been a moment in working unscripted television where something happened and you just missed it, whether it was off to the side or you guys were filming something else and you just are kicking yourself that you didn't have a camera on it? Um, we've, we've definitely experienced a few of those moments. Um, if you have a good cast of your show, they're very spontaneous and, and fun. And we, uh, oftentimes there'll be, uh, 12 people in a scene all doing their things and there's only three cameramen. So, uh, to cover everybody doing everything is, is, is difficult. And, uh, We'll have, we'll have moments where someone will just say the funniest thing you've ever heard in your life and we'll look around and none of the three cameras are on it. And you're just like, no, or, uh, you know, someone will, will, will they'll all be working on a car and someone will accidentally cut a, a line and fluid sprays everywhere. And, and, you know, if you're not shooting it, then you're just like, oh no, you can't, can't shoot that again. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, you know, so so moments like those um, happen, uh, and unfortunately, that's just that's part of it. Sometimes you can kind of have them tell the story again, sure. you know, as, as to like what happened, and we can kind of save that moment. But the very the very first time is always the best time, and uh, and if you don't get that, then that's that's always unfortunate. But hopefully, hopefully, you get a bunch of other good moments that make up for it. Sure. Now, if someone was interested in pursuing a job in camera work or director of photography or any other uh, mm -hmm. backstage, behind the scenes crew members of a show like yours, uh, what should they start studying? Like what different things should they study? Um, important parts of, of the camera department is, uh, is knowing, I mean, first and foremost is just is lighting um how to light things how to um um frame things properly in the frame um those are always the the quintessential parts of being a director of photography is is making sure that everything is lit well and looks good and uh is in focus but um as far as learning how to um do the job some of the best things you can do is um is get on sets um, as a as a production assistant. 
Um, it's a very, the production assistant is like the, the entry level position on a TV show or a movie. Um, and sometimes you're getting coffee, uh, and sometimes you're making copies for people, but other times you're right there. Um, you're not controlling the camera, but you can see the person that's doing the camera work and kind of learn from watching. You can see the guy that's, that's hanging all the lighting and you, you get to observe and learn that way. Um, sure. I know, um, like, you know, as well, just being in Arkansas growing up, there's not a lot of film and TV being working, like happening there a lot. Sure. Um, and so what I used to love to do is any chance I got to watch behind the scenes footage of, of a movie or a TV show that I like, I would, I would watch it and I would pause it and I would see what everybody's doing and try to see what, how I can, how I can replicate that and what I'm doing. Um, and a lot of learning that way. And, you know, you can find those on, on YouTube or on, you know, DVDs. If anybody's still got Blu-rays and DVDs, the <laughs> behind the scenes features on those are always really uh, helpful. And there's, there's tons of, of tutorials online, um, books. You can probably find tons of books on, on cinematography, on, um, even just learning terms when you're on set. Cause that's one of the first things you'll do. It's almost like they're speaking another language when you show up on set because they're, they're asking for C 47s. And if you don't know what that is, you're, you're just like, Oh no, what do I grab? And then you realize C 47 is a clothespin. Um, and so it's literally just a wooden clothespin that you would use to. Yeah. See, I did that. Uh -huh, like I, had, we call like I knew what you were talking about. I had no clue. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so if you get on set and they ask for a C 47, you, you go find a clothespin and, and, uh, instead of an extension, like, you know, everybody has like an extension cord, you call that a stinger. Um, and you know, there's just, it's, it's every, every light has its own name. Um, every, like, like every little piece and moving part of it, every job has its own term. So, um, I know a lot of good cinematography books out there that I read would literally have an entire section just to learning what things are called. Oh, wow. So, uh, let's go back. Yeah, so you mentioned, fun. uh, like work, uh, just finding things to work on, uh, and it, in this day and age of YouTube and, uh, digital cameras being so much cheaper than they were. I mean, even back when we were in school, uh, it's a lot more, mm -hmm. uh, independent, yeah, right? a lot more smaller filmmaking. Um, when mm -hmm. you were growing up and getting interested in filmmaking, what filmmakers did you look up to that you said, Hey, I want to do what they're doing? Um, so I, I've always just been a big fan of, uh, Steven Spielberg's work. Mm -hmm. Um, I know when you get, um, into deep into cinematography, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that were more skilled in different things in different ways. But one thing that I've always enjoyed from um, Spielberg and his, his works is just that they are, um, they're just really good stories that have really good characters that everybody uh, remembers and enjoys. And um, luckily he's had a lot of box office success from it, but also <laughs> yeah. he, like, you know, anybody, anybody knows what you're talking about when you hear the, the Jaws thing, you know, a shark's coming, you know, sure. uh, you, you know, and, and uh, uh, just some of the most iconic movies of our time he's, he's, he's had a part of. And um, I've always said that, like, if I were to, like, make a movie, I would rather it to be, like, one of, like, the most loved or most enjoyed movies of all time, as opposed to being, like, the most skilled movie of all time now spielberg is extremely well skilled and, oh, and yeah. um very good at what he does but i think his the thing i admire the most about him is is he makes movies that people just fall in love with and enjoy but um, also going I along with what you said about just learning from a young age and getting on sets that's actually how he learned while he was still in high school uh snuck on to film studio uh, studio lots and just mm -hmm. would hang around and made a fake office just so he could learn how television was made. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, that goes right along with what you were saying. So. Yeah. Um, and then from like a, from a cinematography standpoint, uh, like uh, Emmanuel Lubezki 
and Roger Deakins, mm-hmm. I think are two of the best um, to ever do it. And if, if you want to learn what good cinematic lighting looks like, in my opinion, you could take any frame from any movie they were the director of photography on and just pause it and take a moment to realize where he put the lighting, where, you know, how everything's composed, how it's framed. Um, and if you just look at any, any still frame, it's, it's actually more difficult when you're watching um, like a movie or a TV show and everything's moving and things are happening real quickly. Um, it's harder to appreciate the work that really went into the lighting because your, your brain's absorbing all the other things that are happening. But if you just take a moment and you just pause a movie, it all starts to make a little more sense to you as far as it's okay. So he has the main light, which is called the key light is, you know, over here. And then, you know, like, Oh, there's obviously a light going across the background. That's a nice touch. And I like that he framed in the person in the background looking over because that tells the story that that person is trying to figure out, you know, there's, there's a lot that can be told in every single frame uh, of a movie. And that's, yeah. I, I really enjoy just obsessing over. I remember, uh, I can't remember who I heard it from, but just enjoy someone watching them told over me. and over. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, um, I, re- I can't remember. I think it might have been our professor, Dr. Blakey, uh, once told me that if a movie is done well enough, you should be able to have it on mute and still be able to follow most of the story. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that's, that's, I've heard that before. And, uh, um, it's, it's funny because it's, it's one of those things where it, it makes total sense. Now, um, we've talked a little bit about, uh, cinematography and film and telling a uh, story through pictures um, are there mm-hmm. different techniques in film and television scripted versus unscripted? Um, yes. So um, as far as from a, from a visual standpoint, um, a lot of times with, with film, because you have multiple takes and a lot of setup goes up into to every angle, um, a lot of times they'll shoot those with, with one primary camera and that's, you'll, you'll shoot out something with one person talking and you'll get them to rehearse and they'll talk and the, the, you, you get the best out of them that you possibly can. And then once you're happy with that angle, then you change angles and then you get the next one and then you shoot that over and over and over again. Um, in order to tell those same stories while shooting reality television, you have to have, multiple cameras. And so um, a lot of times we will run three cameras with three cameramen on them as well as um, we use a a bunch of little action cameras. We use GoPro cameras a lot. And so there will be scenes where we have 15 cameras going at the same time. So that way um, we can be everywhere we need to be at once. And it's, it's very important to, so if you're telling the story of them fixing this car or putting new wheels and tires on the car, you want to have like a camera angle inside the wheel well of a car so you can see when they go through and start tightening the wrenches. And we won't be able to see that with our cameras because usually if you've ever seen someone change a tire, their back's to you the whole time. and You don't get to see what they're doing because they're all inside these little spots. So in order to tell the story as best you can, you need to be able to think ahead as to what everything these guys are going to be doing. Um, and then, um, place cameras accordingly. And then once the scene starts, it's, uh, it's probably really funny to watch because it's three of us cameramen all moving around following all these guys but we can't show each other because you don't want to see the camera guys so we're doing this weird dance with the three of us moving around each other and and moving back and forth and having to kind of like you you, luckily I've worked with these guys for a really long time and we kind of know each other know where we're going to be without having to talk because you don't want to talk to each other because then you hear us discussing what we're doing so you kind of you're you're we're, we're moving around back and forth and chasing all around the vehicles. And it's, um, 
from, I've always wondered what it looks like from the outside perspective. It's got to look pretty funny to see us uh, avoid bumping in and dancing around uh, car parts and things on the ground. And uh, when I was shooting the football show, um, you were actually dodging like football players because we were at practice, you know, and there, you've got all these great athletes running around you at full speed and pads. And um, I definitely, I did not get hit myself, but I definitely saw quite a few cameramen get, uh, get accidentally tackled by several football players. Um, and that is typically something that doesn't happen much when you're shooting uh, movies. Uh, you don't run into that issue nearly as much. Or at least you hope not. <laughs> yeah, at least you hope not. If, you, if, if that happened, then something, something's probably gone wrong. Now, you mentioned using GoPros a lot on your show. Um, mm -hmm. Technology-wise, camera-wise, uh, the big mm -hmm. main cameras they use, are they different kinds of cameras than what they do in – uh, like sitcoms and movies, uh, scripted television and movies? Um, it's very situational because there are some cameras in movies and TV that are very similar to ours, depending on the style of the movie. But for okay. the most part, the big difference is um, our cameras are built to be as portable as possible because we're doing all of that that running around and moving and sliding under things. And I mean, yeah, they're 35, 40 pounds, so they're not, you know, lightweight handy cameras, <laughs> but, um, I've seen, I've seen cinema rigs, you know, for movies get upwards of 50 something pounds and they're on tripods that weigh 20 pounds. And, um, uh, you know, they're, they're not portable. They're, they're locked in, you, you know, and, um, and you get to have all the cool gadgets and bells and whistles and everything that you would want on a cinema camera. Whereas on our cameras, we, it's, it's focused on being as compact, as lightweight and as portable as possible while still being able to do everything you need it to do. Um, our cameras that we use actually aren't that, uh, um, that new or advanced compared to, uh, what you can get out there. Um, what's important to, to us is the lens. Um, a lot of people focus so much on the camera and what your camera can do and can't do and can it do slow-mo and can it, you know, is it in 4K or 8K resolution? And um, really what comes down to for us a lot of times is, uh, is our lenses. Um, our lenses cost more each than than a typical new car does um and it's because we need to be able to um go really wide on some shots and we want to be able to go really tight and close up on some things and unlike in a movie we don't have time to change the lens um okay. a lot of times in a movie um when you want to get a close-up of something you'll take the time, you, you know, they'll cut, they'll, they'll change the lens to a further zoom lens and, and shoot that shot with new lighting and everything. Whereas we have to go from wide of seeing, you know, a truck and a helicopter flying overhead. And, and then all of a sudden we have to punch into a, to a, a close-up shot of the guy driving the car, you know, and we have to do that in a matter of seconds. And so it's very important to us to have lenses that are capable of, of doing that. And, um, you know, because of that, unfortunately they do get heavier and more expensive, um, to get the lenses that can do that. Sure. But, um, but that to me is probably more important than the camera itself. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, I was just thinking about that before we sat down. It's like, I wonder mm -hmm. if there is a big technological difference between the two, but it makes sense that the more mm -hmm. of the scripted reality, fake reality shows like The Office and Parks and Rec use pretty much the mm -hmm. exact same thing to get that exact same mm -hmm. look and yeah, uh, lenses. Yep. Yeah, that's so of all the projects you've gotten to work on, what has been mm -hmm. your favorite project mm -hmm. to work on? My favorite thing to work on? Um, I, I will have to say, um, I've been, I've been on probably 20 different reality or sports shows and it's a, the football show. I've brought it up a few times as a close second 
weekend because it was, it was a lot of fun. I love college football. So like getting, we got to go to the practices, we got to go to the games. Um, we traveled to every city they traveled to, and that was a lot of fun, but it's really hard to beat this show that I'm on right now. Now um, it's, it's diesel brothers on discovery channel and these guys build the craziest trucks and do the wildest stunts. And um, they work with some, some pretty big name celebrities and that's been fun. I've gotten to meet Shaquille O'Neal, wow. um, uh, Chuck Norris. Uh, yeah. Um, we've worked with uh, Marshawn Lynch, Jacob deGrom. Um, and like we go and we film, we actually, the guy, have trucks that are at monster jam so i've been to like on the track of monster jam with giant monster trucks you know doing backflips and um it's 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 hard hard to i i find it i'll be surprised if another show gives me the same experiences that this show does it's just it's really exciting the 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 main cast the the guys that are the main guys on the show are an absolute pleasure to work with. They are, um, you know, sometimes you think of like, when you think of like celebrities, reality TV shows, people, you hear that they're not the same as they are, you know, on screen as they are off screen. But these guys, um, you know, we've, we've kind of become like family over time, you know, cause we've, I've, I've been on the show the last four years and, uh, we're on season seven right now. And so I'm, I'm at their shop 12 hours a day, five days a week. Um, so I, I see them more than I see my own family other than my brother. Uh, my little brother, actually, I just got hired on the show. So that's oh, cool. been another big exciting thing about, uh, about this show. And this made the experience even better is now I have like my, my little brother actually is working with me in the camera department on the same show. And I've never, never been able to, to, to have that happen before. Yeah, so that's, your actual that's family blending in with your work family. So that's really special. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. That's a, that's an experience that not a lot of people in this industry get. So I'm 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 very thankful for that. Absolutely. Well, David, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, I had a wonderful time. I learned a whole lot. Uh, and once again, just hopefully this wasn't too painful for you. No, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. It was, it was good talking with you again, buddy. I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. So uh, uh, thank you once again, and you have a good day. All right. Appreciate it, David. Have a good one. Bye. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with David Plummer. I have a lot of fun learning about reality shows and how they're put together. Well, make sure you join us next week where we talk to a professional children's musician. Does that sound like fun? All right, guys. Thanks once again to David Plummer, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.